Well, Biologics has had a very strong quarter. It's had a growth of 31% year on year uh, at the uh, you know quarterly number, and it's a 50% year on year growth for the first nine months. So I think Biologics has performed very strongly. Uh, uh, you know, as you've already heard, Sinjin also has had a good set of numbers this quarter and for the first nine months. Uh, small molecules has also delivered fairly well. So I think if you look at it at a quarterly level, we've seen a 14% year-on-year increase in terms of revenues, 18% increase in terms of EBITDA, which is also a very strong performance. Uh, at a uh, you know profit level, if you adjust for the tax pertaining to an exceptional item that really was an internal uh, you know matter where we transferred uh, an, uh, an asset uh, class to a new subsidiary called Baikara. If you adjust for that, then of course we've also seen a 6% increase in PAT from 211 crores last fiscal to 225 crores this fiscal. So I think overall we've had a very, very strong performance. Um, and of course, we expect an even stronger performance uh, for the final quarter for this fiscal. You can understand that when you look at the biologics business, there's an increasing spend on R&D. And R&D is extremely integral uh, to the biologics business. As you know, R&D spends are very expensive for bio biosimilar development. Now, you can see that this quarter we've had a 71% year-on-year growth in R&D, which hits the bottom line. And that itself accounts for about 54 crores of extra additional R&D spends for this quarter. So, if you look at that, then I think you will understand that you know, maintaining high, uh, you know, margins in biologics itself is a good performance. So, in terms of uptick, I don't want to really, uh, you know, set that kind of expectations other than saying that you are going to see a very healthy 30% uh, plus um, a kind of levels. I mean, this year, if you look at core margins, it is 33%, but it's about 27% when you look at, uh, you know, the, the net uh, EBITDA margins. So I think if you look at just the, uh, you know, biologics business, certainly biologics is in that sort of 30% plus operating margins and we will maintain it at that. And if you were to factor the kind of R&D spends, then I think these kind of uh, margins are very healthy. We certainly expect FY21 to continue on this growth momentum. I think uh, you are going to see a very strong performance by uh, biologics for sure, because this is the year where we expect, uh, you know, the continued growth momentum of both Pegfil, Grastim and Trastuzumab in the US. But we also expect, uh, you know, Trastuzumab and Pegfil, Grastim growth across global markets. And uh, we also expect to launch uh, insulin glargine in FY21 in the second half. And we also expect, uh, you know, uh, some other possible launches, uh, you know, later in uh, in the latter half or probably in late FY21, whose real uh, numbers will show up in FY22, which will include bevacizumab and insulin aspart. So there are a lot of upsides for FY21, including recombinant human insulin for the U.S., uh, and, but all that depends on the regulatory uh, timelines uh, that uh, might, uh, you know, factor these kind of events.